Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about Google's new unified Gen AI SDK. Why do we need it? What problem does it solve? We'll also walk through in a visual way the Python SDK to see how we can leverage this. All right, let's get started. If you've been working with Gemini, you likely encountered two separate client libraries, one for Gemini developer API and the other for Gemini API on Vertex AI which is the enterprise version of it. While they were similar, they weren't exactly interchangeable. What this meant was that when moving from experimentation in Gemini developer API to production in Vertex API, you had to rewrite the code, which while not difficult, was definitely not pain-free. The release of the new Google Gen AI SDK solves this problem. This is a unified library for both Gemini 2 as well as 1.5. And it works seamlessly for both the developer API and the Vertex AI on the enterprise version. What we'll do in this walkthrough is create a Python client to explore these models. For simplicity's sake, we'll explore the three different methods of leveraging the client in this video. One, generate content, generate streaming content, as well as the chat client. Generate content is exactly what it sounds like. It generates content based on the inputs at one shot. Generate streaming content, on the other hand, generates the output, but in a streaming response way. Now, chat handles the history of the previous rounds of questions and responses and allowing the user to step incrementally towards the answer. Now, this feature provides an interface you know, to keep track of the conversation history, but behind the scenes, it's using the same generate content method to create the response. So let's jump right in. All the code I'm gonna be walking through today is available in the description below. Let's first install the SDK using pip install. Now for the developer version, there's an easy way to get the keys. If you're using Google Collab, you would find it under the key section and then if you click on import from AI Studio, you would automatically have the key as a secret. But if you're not using Google Collab, you can still get the keys by going to aistudio.google.com and generating a free API key for your use. Once the client is created, we'll call the generate content method using the Gemini 2.0 flash model and provide the input text under the context. And then we'll print out the response. This is great, uh, but what if I had to switch to Vertex AI Enterprise? Well, that's easy. The only change you'll need to do is authenticate to Google Cloud first, and then provide the project ID for your GCP project. Now you can see that the generation piece the code for that is exactly the same. And if you run this code, we would get the similar kind of output, but this time using the Vertex AI enterprise version. In the previous example, you saw that the response was generated at one shot. But what if you wanted to have a streaming kind of response? That's easy. The only change that we'll have to do is call the generate content stream method and then pass in the same variables. And for the output, we're just going to print it out in a chunk by chunk manner. Cool, we talked about generating content as well as generating streaming content. The next one we want to explore is the chat session. In the chat client method, we maintain the history of the conversation as well as the context. So for example, in this particular example, I'm going to run the first section of the code which says I want to play a tic-tac-toe game. And I selected the position, which is great. We see the response from the LLM but now let's follow up the same conversation with my next move. Now what happens is it maintains the context of my previous input as well as the previous LLM response and then generates the output based off that. Now this is extremely helpful in a conversation type of scenario where the context and history needs to be maintained. Now let's also talk about some of the configuration parameters. By default, if you don't specify any configuration, it defaults to a set of configurations. But let's say you want to modify the temperature, which in LLM speak means the amount of 
specific response that you want the model to have. You can modify the temperature or even set the limits on the number of output tokens, just to be mindful of course. And the way you would do this is by changing the config parameter and specifying the variables under the generate config method. We can also pass in system instructions. So why do we need system instructions? Well, system instructions helps you define the persona of your client instance. For example, in this case, I'm going to take the persona of a short-tempered pirate. And you see the response. Not something I would want, but it's definitely possible. Well, that's it for this video. We'll talk about vision, audio, as well as a new multimodal live API in the upcoming video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.